Hey guys, what's up? It's once again it is mp4podcast.com bringing you guys some of the most interesting video game theories that you guys really do need to know about. Yeah, this is not a news story. This is just a theory that's coming out of the top of my head because I'm a little crazy and I think about really weird things in the video game industry. So anyway, you know, it's no big secret that the Xbox One is behind on resolution and frame rate. Something usually has to give if it's if the if the Xbox is going to be 1080p uh, compared to the same version that's on PlayStation 4, where it's going to, they're going to have to drop in frames, or if they want to still have 60 frames, usually the Xbox One version will have to be, you know, 720p or so on. Now, a lot of people will say that it's the DDR3 RAM, which in a lot of cases this can be true. Uh, it's starting to show up that the DDR3 RAM is slow. However, when you look at Rise, Rise, Son of Rome, that game is like a generation above other, so many other games. It's probably the best looking game, period, I mean, that you can get on any console, PC, or anything else. The only thing that probably even beats Rise is a pre-rendered CG movie. So that's pretty impressive. Meanwhile, when Rise does look as good as a pre-rendered CG movie. Now, a lot of people have talked about that that was one of the games that uses the ES RAM. That's 32 megabits um, of special storage for RAM where it takes some data out of the DDR3 and stores it for certain purposes to uh, bring up the speed on the GPU. And I believe there is another 16 uh, megs of RAM or 8 gigs, I mean, not 8 gigs, 8 megs, excuse me, uh, for something else and a lot of people really don't know what this is about, but we do know that there is ES RAM in the Xbox One for speeding up the GPU. So, I was thinking about this and I was like, what else could be done to the Xbox One to boost the speed of the Xbox One? They can't make another console, that's out of the question. They already made what they made, and they're stuck with it. Well, there is that USB 3, uh, 3.0 port on the side of the Xbox One. Now, with Windows, you can take a USB, uh, uh, USB 2 uh, key, stick it into your computer, and you can make a special boot USB drive where it caches some RAM, and it does help make Windows run a little bit smoother and less laggy. So, when you look at games like Grand Theft Auto 5, like I'm going to take the Xbox One uh, version, uh, I'm excuse me, the Xbox 360 version. It came on two discs, okay? Where one game, one disc was the installation disc, where it cached a bunch of data to the hard drive. Then the other disc was the play, the play disc. So. Grand Theft Auto 5 was caching data from the hard drive and uh, the desk as well. And that was because the game was, was so advanced. I mean, that was Grand Theft Auto 5, GTA 5, is one of the games that really pushes the limits of the Xbox 360 and the PS3 to the limits. I mean, those are old consoles. And I mean, Rockstar did an amazing job with that game. But people have even. Uh, went a little further in trying to boost the speed of the Xbox 360 version of Grand Theft Auto 5. So what some people did was they, you know, they take the installation disc uh, and then that gets installed to the hard drive. But then what they did was they took the other uh, disc and the play disc and they installed that to a USB key. So you still need to have the disc in there for verification. But the game was running off the hard drive and the USB key. And that actually sped up uh, the frame rates just a little bit more and made it a little bit more smoother on the Xbox 360. Now there, is, there was one side effect uh, to this me method. When you see like there's like a helicopter sh uh, shot of the pair and you can see like the waves, you know like when the waves are just about to crash, you, they get uh, a little white, I guess they're air bubbles or something like that. The white part of the waves wasn't in there when it was running off the USB key. It was there on the desk, but everything else running off the USB key and the hard drive of the Xbox 360 
ran better at better frame rates. So this is what I think Microsoft should do. If it can be done, and remember, I'm not a programmer, I'm not an engineer, this is just an idea in my head. What Microsoft should do is tell developers that, you know, let people uh, use USB 3.0 uh, keys and let them install some parts of the game to that key to speed up the ES RAM. Remember, the ES RAM has to be pulled out of the GDR3. So maybe, you know, maybe that, RAM, that GDR3 can be utilized a little bit better for moving other data. And you know, they don't have to fill up some of that DDR3 for memory for the ES RAM. That can all be coming off the USB key. Boom, bada boom, bada bang. It's just, it's just going, 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 going. Now who knows? Maybe they can even speed it up more. This is just another crazy idea. There's two USB ports in the back of the Xbox One. What if you put two USB keys in there, right? Yeah, I know USB 2.0 uh, 2 is slower, but what if you put two of them in there and they could both be caching in the back? So you have three USB keys. I know that's a little overkill and that's a little crazy, but you know they're probably not going to do that. But I really do think that caching to one USB 3.0 uh, key could solve a lot of problems for Microsoft. I don't know how much it's going to solve. Maybe it will get it over the hump somewhat. Um, maybe games that like you know we're always probably maybe we'll get games at 900p or 1080p whatever It'll, it's better but i can tell you that when i had my nintendo 64 and i popped in that four megs of extra ram into the playstation uh, i'm say play i mean the nintendo 64 it was night and day i remember playing star wars uh, pod racer and when I wasn't using the 4 megs of RAM, the textures were all blurry. And it looked like crap, to be honest with you. And I was playing it, the gameplay was still the same. But then I put that 4 megs of RAM in there. And I was like, wow, that is an improvement. And I, I did it with uh, Resident Evil 2. I think Resident Evil 2, you could play it with, the, with, with or without the um, expansion. Um, some games for the Nintendo 64, you do need that expansion. I think it was one of the Donkey Kongs and maybe GoldenEye, you needed it. Not quite, I'm not quite sure. But there was a big difference when it had that extra RAM to cash on. Now, also, I, uh, my Sega Saturn, when, uh, when I got X-Men vs. Street Fighter, um, Capcom actually put a 4 meg uh, cartridge in there and that was able to really bring that game up to speed just like the arcade so you could be tagging in and out with four characters remember that we're, we're talking 32-bit uh, errors 32-bit um, um, machines back in the day not 32-bit 64 maybe whatever what play um, uh, yeah 32-bit I'm, I'm getting the generations mixed up PlayStation 1 um, Sega Saturn with the 32-bit errors I was thinking 64 or whatever um, but X-Men uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter it was just like the arcade with four characters you could be tagging in and out in and out but on the on the PlayStation 1 version you could uh, pick a character and then you can pick an assist an assistant basically so let's say I'm, I'm playing Ryu right on the on the PlayStation 1 and then I would pick an assistant I'll say the Incredible Hulk I used to really like the Incredible Hulk because he would come out with the fist he would just come out for a second and then he would go back you really weren't tag team tag teaming he would just come out for a second to help you out with his superpower and that was it but by adding the extra uh, memory in there it actually really improved this um, X-Men um, X-Men versus Street Fighter on the Sega Saturn and the extra RAM which was used in the Nintendo 64 it improved the experience so maybe with the speed of USB 3.0 with a USB uh, 3.0 key I mean it would probably be nice if Microsoft even made it one that's a little bit nicer so it doesn't look like there's a weird key uh, stick coming out of the left side of your Xbox One but whatever I think it could probably work I really think it could probably work. It could probably get Microsoft over that hump and so on. And um, I'm really interested in what this can do because there's another kid, I can't remember his name, but he uh, runs a PlayStation channel. And um, he took, he got one of those hard drives that's uh, 
slash uh, regular and S SSD hard drive and it actually improved the boot up uh, speed of the PlayStation 4 and the cache and the lo loading of games and everything. I think you can get these hard drives like sometimes they'll have like a hundred megabits of uh, uh, SSD or 500 meg. They have different models um, but there was a big uh, improvement and so like my PlayStation 4 I just have the, the hard drive that's in there and the and if you get that hybrid hard drive, that is a lot quicker than the hard drive that comes with the PS, P, PS4. And, but if you get the SSD one that's just flat out SSD, it's a little bit faster than the hybrid one uh, that you can install on your PlayStation 4. So I think Microsoft should really look at the possibility of supporting USB 3.0 installation so you can install some parts of the game on that key to boost the speed of the Xbox One. Let me get. Let me know what you guys think. I know one of my subscribers is in the video game industry, and I'm kind of interested in what he has to say. And uh, not too nerdy. I will leave a link to his channel as well. He gave me a shout out, so I just want to return that favor. He has a great channel. Uh, it's very similar to mine. Uh, he's a commentator. He has a really cool show uh, called Warframe Wednesday. So all you Warframe uh, guys out there, definitely check him out. It's a really cool podcast. He talks about what's going on in the industry. Uh, it's a really fun podcast. Uh, you can watch it on your PlayStation uh, 4, you know, with the YouTube app. Uh, Xbox, Nintendo, whatever you do, just want to sit down on the couch, watch some uh, Warframe, and just chill and relax. His link again will be in the description box of this video. Once again, guys, this has been mp4podcast.com signing out. You guys stay safe and have a good one. Later, guys, bye.